All right, so I'm starting a new uh, project for a customer here. Uh, it's a pretty cool little samurai. Uh, right now it's on Old Man Emu Springs. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which ones. Um, 235, 75, 15, BF Goodrich mud, mud Trains. Um, pretty cool little samurai. Uh, it's got a winch, custom made bumpers, front and rear. spare tire rack uh, it's got a lock right currently in the back um, that he's having trouble with um, it's got one side I guess that keeps uh, skipping um, he's got the interior pretty well gutted because he's gonna um, you know kind of go through and restore the interior but it's got a um, Zooks off-road Siamese twin twin stick shifter and uh, sumo 6.4 gears in it already. So for the tire size, um, with that transfer case, the gearing is pretty awesome on the street. Um, should be basically stock gearing, if not a little lower, um, which with, uh, with a little 1.3, you know, you need all the gearing you can get. Um, so to me, this is kind of a, kind of a perfect Samurai, um, still small. Small tires, so the Samurai axles are, uh, you know, plenty strong. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, he's having some rubbing on the firewall, so we're going to add about another inch of lift overall. Um, and when I get to that point, um, I'll show that. Um, I'm going to do this this project in, in several videos because I'm going to be doing quite a bit of work to it. Uh, so I'm going to add an inch of lift, um, pull out the lock right, and then... I'm going to install a pair of TRE e-lockers um, as well as a set of RCV front axle shafts. Um, so we're doing two of the TE-208s. Um, they're technically made for the rear, but that means it's got a 26 spline for the front instead of the original 22, and you need the 26 spline for the aftermarket axle shafts. Um, so this thing should be pretty capable off-road uh, and kind of a sleeper. Um, got you know good tires, good gearing. Could be 100% locked, you know, and uh, we'll have good strong axle shafts in the front. That's kind of the weak link when you put a locker in the front of these things. Um, and really, the only thing left, um, and it's more of a preference thing, would be power steering. Um, but the nice thing with the electric locker is you get in a tight spot where you really need to steer. You can just turn it off and uh, it'll steer like stock. And then you get, get stuck or in a really tough position, then you just kick in the front locker. Um, yeah, so this is gonna be cool. Um, so I just got it pulled inside. I'm gonna get it jacked up and uh, start pulling apart and I will take you guys along basically the entire process of installing this stuff. Um, if you've seen my other videos, I've done the locker installations, but that was basically just on the bench with the third member. So I might not focus as much on that stuff um, and more of the, the tear down of the vehicle, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, this is just part one and kind of the introduction to this project. Um, so I'll probably be posting hopefully about a, a video a day or so just depending on how the progress goes. Um, it's a fair amount of work, um, but um, this is all pretty easy stuff to do. Basically anybody can do this um, in your driveway or in your garage or whatever. Um, just to replace these lockers, I mean, there's really no special tools involved, but really the only thing you need is a, is a dial indicator that you can get from like Harbor Freight for I don't know, 20, 30, 50 dollars at the most. Um, and I'll go through all that stuff and show it again. But basically, you just got to measure out where your backlash is, make sure it's within uh, the factory specified range and put it back together where it was, if it, if it is within range. Um, pretty easy. Um, yeah, nothing. This thing is going to be amazing off-road. It's going to hurt some uh, it's going to hurt some feelings when people see this thing 
out, out wheeling their Jeeps or whatever, um, just because it looks, you know, a lot less uh, intimidating with its small size, but uh, being locked and with these tires, this thing's gonna be an animal. I can't wait to see it. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'll have another video up soon uh, once I get this thing kind of up in the air and get the wheels off and then we'll start tearing the front end apart. Uh, I'm gonna start with the front axle because uh, I'm also going to go through and uh, I'm not sure the mileage but on this thing, but uh, it's pretty common that you need to rebuild the front axles fairly often on these, um, especially if they've been driven in the water and in, in mud. Um, it's pretty easy for water and mud to get inside the, the housings and, and tear up the bearings. Um, so we're just going to go through and rebuild everything. It'd be all new... Uh, knuckleball seals and, and wheel bearings and kingpin bearings and all basically everything inside the knuckles. Um, they're usually pretty leaky. Um, and so depending on how this thing looks, I'll kind of explain uh, stuff to look for and common issues. Oh, one more thing. It's got a, when I get the housings all apart, there's some diff armor. I'm going to be weld on. Um, because these, uh, these housings, right, the kind of the the cover area, you know, it's a non-removable cover, but that's real thin and really easy to dent. And I think the front one already is dented, so I'll have to be, I'll have to pound that out when I get it all apart. Um, the diff armor is going to help out a lot. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, thanks for watching and, and keep tuned. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll basically show the entire process, you know, like I said, uh, the electrical, installing the switches, everything. Um, trying to make this really a complete guide for somebody if you've bought these lockers um, of everything you gotta do. All right, well, thanks a lot. Uh, pay attention for part two.